After the Sabbath, as the first light of the new week dawned, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to keep vigil at the tomb. Suddenly the earth reeled and rocked under their feet as God's angel came down from the heaven and came right up to where they were standing. He rolled back the stone and then sat on it. Shafts of lightning blazed from him. His garment shimmered snow white. The guards at the tomb were scared to death. They were so frightened they could not move. The angel spoke to the woman. There is nothing to fear here. I know you're looking for Jesus, the one they nailed to the cross. He is not here. He was raised, just as he said. Come and look at the place where he was placed. Now get on your way quickly and tell his disciples, he is risen from the dead. He is going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. The women, deep in wonder and full of joy, lost no time in leaving the tomb. They ran to tell the disciples. Then Jesus met them, stopping them in their tracks. Good morning, he said. They fell to their knees, embraced his feet and worshiped him. Jesus said, you're holding on to me for dear life. Don't be frightened like that. Go tell my brothers that they are to go to Galilee and that I'll meet them there. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. We're going to try that again with the words. Christ is risen. Ah, that's good. You are so welcome to worship as part of Movilla Abbey Church. Thank you for joining us. Uh, a special welcome to you if you're a guest with us, uh, and a special welcome to those joining us online as well. This is Resurrection Sunday, the day that changed everything, and a day that can change everything for you. Um, and the journey up today, we've been journeying through Lent. Uh, if you've been part of us regularly on a Sunday, you'll know about the prayer that has been going on all the way through Lent. Uh, you'll know about our prayer room. You'll know about a period of just over 24 hours of prayer, which has just come to an end. Um, the prayer warriors of this church pouring out their hearts to God, interceding for the community, um, for homes, for families, for businesses. That is uh, the work of the resurrection people. And so we're so grateful to everyone who's been involved in, uh, in Lent, in making the prayer room happen, uh, and uh, whether that's been in, involved in facilitating it, or whether you're just one of those people who's showed up uh, and done the work of prayer. We are so grateful to you, um, and we just want to recognize you today. Um, later on, we're going to be gathering around this table. We're going to be sharing bread and wine, as Jesus invited us to do, to remember him. Uh, and so if you're joining us uh, online from somewhere else, you might want to have uh, bread and wine or alternatives ready at home so that we can share this meal together. But before then, we are going to pray, we're going to hear from Scripture, and we're going to sing. So I want to encourage you to be open to all the ways that God wants to speak today. And don't forget if there's something that you feel um, that God is speaking to you, which is for all of us to hear, then just come and find Alan or me uh, around the front here and let us know. We also want to be open to all the different ways that we can worship God together. This is a day of celebration. Um, so we'll raise our voices, we'll raise our hands, maybe people might want to uh, grab flags to wave, but if that's not where you are, uh, if you need to sit quietly and reflect, that is welcome too. Let's use all our gifts in worship. Um, but now, let's stand together. Um, hundreds of years before Jesus, the prophet Isaiah had a glimpse of what was to come. And we're going to declare the words that God gave him together now as we begin our worship. You, Lord, are my God. I will praise you for doing the wonderful things you had planned and promised since ancient times. Here, the Lord will strip away the burial clothes that cover the nations. 
the Lord all-powerful will destroy the power of death and wipe away all tears. No longer will his people be insulted everywhere. The Lord has spoken. At that time, people will say, the Lord has saved us. Let's celebrate. We waited and hoped. Now our God is here. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is Resurrection Sunday. As Michael said a moment ago, this is the day that Jesus rose from the dead, and that event in history changes everything. And it's a day that can change everything for you. Before we pray, let me tell you why that is. With his dying breaths from the cross on Friday, Jesus had cried out in his native Aramaic tongue, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is a direct quote from one of David's psalms, meaning, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the simple good news message of today is this. Because he loves you and me so much, Jesus was forsaken by God so that you and I need never be. 
Jesus was nailed down so that we can be set free. Jesus was cursed so that we might be blessed. Jesus was killed, died, so that we might live. And he rose from the dead to make all of that certain, certain, clothed in certainty we've just sung. Even though we've all messed up and the things we've done wrong create a bleak barrier between us and God and, and each other, the risen Jesus can change that by removing that barrier. Here's what the Bible says. Hopefully we've got uh, this reading uh, on the screen from Colossians. Paul writes this, you were dead. That's kind of what it's like, that barrier between us and God, because you were sinful and were not God's people. But God let Christ make you alive when he forgave all your sins, our sins. God wiped out the charges that were against us for disobeying the law of Moses. He took them away and nailed them to the cross. There, Christ defeated all powers and forces. He let the whole world see them being led away as prisoners when he celebrated his victory. So here what we, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk to God in prayer. And this is an opportunity for each one of us to either refresh or maybe even receive for the first time the benefit of what Jesus did for us through his death and resurrection. We're going to say and do three simple things. It's the three things uh, we teach our children. I hope we all teach our children. If we're parents, to say thank you, sorry, and please. We're going to say thank you to Jesus for loving us and giving his life on the cross for us. We're going to say sorry for all the wrong things uh, we've ever done, said, or entertained in our thoughts because after all our sin is why Jesus gave his life out of love for us. And then we're going to say please and ask him to come into our life as Lord. If you'd like to do that, if you'd like to renew that at the start of this service, if you'd like to do that for the first time, I'm going to say a prayer now that you can simply repeat and make your own uh, in the silence of your hearts. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me so much that you gave your life on the cross to rescue me from my sin. I am sorry, Lord, for all that I have done wrong. And in just a moment, a pause, I invite you just to think of anything that you know uh, stands in between you and God. And you need to know that whatever it is, it can be forgiven. Name that thing and just give that to God now. Please forgive me and be Lord of my life. I open the door of my heart to you now and I ask that you would come in and fill me with your spirit and your risen life. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, let me repeat again what we've just read from Scripture. God wipes out the charges that were against us. He takes them away, having nailed them to the cross. They're done. They're dealt with. They no longer have any power and we can uh, walk in Jesus' new life. So let's say thank you to Jesus in worship.
Lord Jesus, thank you for the power that is in your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your power which is present with us now and available to each one of us for um, the renewing of our lives. Lord, as we continue to focus our hearts and minds on you and continue to reflect on your resurrection and what it means for the world, and what it means for us. Holy Spirit, we are open to you. Amen. Amen. Do you ever consider how odd it is when you see someone wearing a cross around their neck? You're so used to seeing the cross (laughs) everywhere you're looking here. And we're so used to seeing it as a necklace, whether it's uh, your favorite footballer or celebrity or your granny or whoever it is. Maybe you're wearing one yourself. And we're so used to that, we don't often stop to think how odd that is. The cross is a weapon of empire an execution stake designed to publicly display those who dared to challenge the order of things. It is a grisly, brutal thing. So what happened? What happened to transform this symbol of tragedy into something else? as we gather around this cross this morning. What happened? What is it that happened? We're gathered around this, this symbol of death, but in a moment, we're going to see it transform 
into a symbol of life. It's a symbol of tragedy, but in a moment, we're going to see it transformed into a symbol of triumph. Sometimes life is uh, full of tragedy, and war, and rumors of wars, and famine, and disappointed hopes, and broken relationships, and violence, and all kinds of oppression, and sometimes looking around at the world, or even looking at our own lives, the tragedy can make us despair. But the message of Resurrection Day is this, that at the center of history, there is a cross and there is an empty tomb, that sin is defeated, that oppression is defeated, that death is defeated, that because of Jesus, because of what God has done, we can look at this grisly symbol of tragedy and we see triumph. That because of Jesus, because of what God has done, we can look at our own lives. We can look at the world around us. And the thing that looks like tragedy, we can see triumph. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. See, the resurrection changes everything. This is true for Jesus as he is brought to life. It is true for the whole universe as God is reconciling all things to himself. The resurrection changes everything. And, and, it's true for you. It's true for you. It's true for me. It's personal. It has to be personal. The resurrection changes everything. God wants to take tragedy and turn it into triumph. Listen to what Paul writes to the church at Corinth. If we preach that Christ was raised from death, how can some of you say that the dead will not be raised to life? If they won't be raised to life, Christ himself wasn't raised to life. And if Christ wasn't raised to life, Our message is worthless. And so is your faith. If the dead won't be raised to life, we've told lies about God by saying that he raised Christ to life when really he did not. So if the dead won't be raised to life, Christ wasn't raised to life. And unless Christ was raised to life, your faith is useless and you're still living in your sin. And those people who died after putting their faith in him, are completely lost. If our hope in Christ is only good for this life, we're worse off than anyone else. But Christ has been raised to life. And he makes us certain that others will also be raised to life. Just as we all die because of Adam, we'll be raised to life because of Christ. Adam brought death to us all, and Christ will bring life to us all. It's not just a metaphor, folks. This is me, no, not Paul anymore. It's not just a metaphor, folks. Resurrection life now, bodily resurrection in the future, it's personal. It's personal. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. It changes everything for Jesus. It changes everything for the universe. It changes everything for you and me. It's personal. It's personal. What we thought of was tragedy is triumph. And so the bag of coins is removed because the tragedy of of betrayal, the tragedy of human greed, it's been dealt with. One of the great tragedies of human life, um, no, let me put this differently. Would you agree that one of the great tragedies of human life is that we're really bad at doing the things that are good for us. 
and we're really good at doing the things that are bad for us. Would you agree? The leaders that we like to choose for ourselves, the values we choose to follow, even the way we imagine we want God to be, it's a tragedy. But it's been dealt with. Marjorie, I wonder would you come and remove the purple robe and the crown of thorns? The symbols with which power mocked weakness. And finally, we remove the nails. The nails that held him there, the the symbols of a simple, brutal human cruelty, human creativity at its worst. We remove the nails because Jesus is no longer on the cross. But a curious thing happens. When Jesus' friends see him alive again and they begin to tell others, uh, one of them, at least one, doubted. I mean, I would too. And when Thomas finally sees Jesus face to face, Jesus says to him, put your hands here. Feel the marks. The resurrected, glorified body of Jesus has nail-scarred hands. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So here's what we're going to do. We've seen the cross stripped of the symbols of cruelty and brutality. And as we continue to worship God now, as we continue to give thanks for the empty tomb, the empty cross, and the resurrection, I'm going to invite you to bring flowers. One at a time, you can't all come at once. And uh, there's uh, a way here for you just to slide your flower into the cross so that by the time we've finished singing together, uh, we'll have seen this weapon of torture transformed into a beautiful symbol of new life. Uh, If you didn't know about the flowers thing, there's flowers here at the front you can come and grab. Uh, Let's stand together as we sing. Yeah.
He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. We're going to move this uh, just, just away so that we can uh, just make ready for communion. We go, should, we go, should we go this way? Okay. Anybody at the end of the service, there's a few spare flowers here. If you'd like to come and fill the gaps, you'll be very uh, welcome to do that a little bit later on. What a wonderful symbol of the life that we celebrate today and the change that Jesus uh, brings to us. We're going to uh, share communion now. You may remember, some of you, that the Apostle Paul said when he was talking about this meal, says, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. But that's not how he finished. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is a celebration not just of the fact that Jesus gave his life for us on the cross, but that he is alive, and he's coming again, and he is going to make right everything that is wrong now. Hallelujah. So let's remember that as we celebrate. You want to share in this meal together, wherever we're taking part from, so there's some simple instructions. If you're taking part from home, um, then if you'd like to have some bread and wine or alternatives in front of you, you can maybe join with us uh, there. In a moment, we're going to share a sign of peace among us as a community. We're going to pray some words of preparation uh, together. There'll be words on the screen for you to, to take part in. And then when everything is ready, you'll be invited row by row um, uh, by a member of our team to come forward and kneel or stand if you're unable at this rail uh, here where you'll be offered bread and non-alcoholic wine in two alternative forms. And if you're new to Mavilla, we want to just make you aware so that it doesn't feel all strange and uncomfortable. Um, we celebrate both uh, our heritages of being Anglicans and Methodists here, so we have the option of taking either a, a long piece of bread, a rectangular piece of, of, of bread, and then you can dip in the common cup. Alternatively, you can receive by taking a small square 
of bread, you'll see that there is a difference when you see the tray offered to you, uh, and then an individual small glass of wine. The choice is yours. Both are a valid way of us sharing. If you're a parent with small children, uh, we have cut grapes as a way for them to take part as well. Taste and see that the Lord is good, uh, Scripture uh, uh, says. But if you feel your children uh, understand what the bread and wine represents and you'd like them to receive, that is okay as well. Because we practice an open table here. And it's important to say that whatever your previous church background, whether you have one or not maybe, uh, if you know this morning that the Lord loves you, and maybe you've only realized that for the first time today, maybe you prayed that prayer at the beginning of the service, and that's the first time you've asked the Lord to come in to your life. But if you did and you want to love him, you are welcome to share this meal. Also, if for whatever reason you prefer not to receive, that's also fine. But we'd like you to know that you can feel free to come forward and kneel or stand, keep your hands by your sides, and we'll pray a prayer of blessing over you. So by this way, hopefully, we can all find some way of taking part in this very special meal that Jesus gave us to remember him by. We remember that on the evening of that day of his resurrection, Jesus came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And when they saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. Let's stand up for a moment and let's uh, just uh, wish those around us a happy Easter. Let's say the peace of the Lord be with you. <clears throat> Happy Resurrection Day, buddy. Peace be with you. The happiest peace be with you. Peace be with you. I love the hair. Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Peace be with you, Jason. Peace be with you. Let's take our seats. Some words will be on the screen for us to prepare our hearts to, to share this meal. The risen Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love shown to us in Jesus Christ. He opened wide his arms upon the cross and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends and taking bread, you gave thanks broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Sorry for that line missing. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now that this bread and wine 
may be for us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this morning this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voices to join the song of heaven forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. If our servers and uh, music team would like to come forward to be served first, and then uh, the rest of us uh, will come.
In a few moments, this time for us together with God will be over and we'll go back to our homes, our midweek lives. Hopefully we've all tasted at least something of the restorative hope and transforming power of Jesus' resurrection this morning. But if it just stays with us and for us alone, then we will have missed the point of being here today. Jesus, in his own words, told us that he did not come to be served, but to serve. And he calls us to follow him, which means to do the same. We, as Christians, like Christ, should not just be here to be served, to have our own wants and needs met, but use what we've been given to meet the needs of others in service, in Jesus' name. That's our calling as we go from here to be an Easter people. Hopeful people in hopeless situations, light people in dark places, kind people in mean spaces, generous people in neglected spaces. You get the picture. So before our final hymn, I'm going to lead us in a short prayer for our world and for ourselves. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day to remind us of the glorious hope that we have in you. But Father, so many people in your world feel hopeless today. We pray for all who hurt in body, mind, or spirit. And we ask for your healing. We pray for all who suffer from broken relationships between individuals in families, and between nations causing conflict and violence. We ask, Lord, in your mercy for reconciliation and peace. Lord, your loving, victorious power shown through the resurrection of Jesus changes everything. Thank you for changing us. So now may you send us out to bring change in all of our relationships. And I can think of no better words to pray this morning than those words of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow your love. Where there is injury, your pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled ourselves as to console others, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Amen. When Jesus appeared to his disciples on the day of his rising, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So let's respond together with this collective prayer, which I hope will appear on the screen. Yes, there it is. Let's uh, pray these words together. Father, thank you for loving us and sending your Son to make and give us peace. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, and send us out to love others and to share your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. I can think of a few finer hymns to uh, finish our celebration together than thine be the glory. Let's stand and worship.
one more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's our prayer and our hope that God has touched you and blessed you this morning, that you're going to go out encouraged and able to share that joy with others. Although some of us may have come with needs which we still feel um, we long to be addressed. We have a prayer ministry team, uh, Ian and Sadie, who are going to be down here in, in this corner in a moment. So don't feel that you have to rush off. If you'd like just some prayer for somebody just to encourage you in your walk, in your journey, uh, they're, they're confidential, they're here, and they would love to pray and minister uh, to you uh, in Jesus' name down here. Just a couple of announcements. Next Sunday at 11 a.m., uh, there's no communion. We would normally have that the first Sunday of the month, but because it's the 31st today, there'll be no communion next week. Next Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we would love to see as many of you as possible coming to our next house of worship. Uh, this is an hour of just celebrating as we've done this morning in God's presence in, in worship. Billy Fife is coming to lead us. Hope you can make that. And a reminder that in a fortnight, our annual church congregational meeting on the 14th of April uh, after our 11 o'clock service. Now, may God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and your family this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.